Mr. Rachel here, the Sense of Tempo County Corso. A little Miss uh, Tennessee over here is in quite the feisty mood, so figured I'd show you guys her horsing around a bit. So I um, wanted to talk to you guys today about um, a message that I got today. I had a guy contact me um, stating that he had once been a big fan of... Um, Say good morning. Good morning. Um, that um, he had once been a big fan of Caesar Milan, but then he had read a couple, uh, and I quote, modern authors for positive reinforcement. And he wasn't convinced that when he was telling his dog to do what it needed to do, that the dog wasn't doing it because the dog was um, afraid or was doing it based on fear. Now, I then asked him, why do my dogs listen to cashmere? He never answered the question. And he didn't answer the question because that is not the answer he wanted to hear. You see, in his eyes, and this is what he said, he said that, he said that there's a difference between the dog-on-dog -dog interaction versus the human-dog interaction. And I, I say to that, Why? Why is there a difference? Who says there's a difference? Because the dog certainly doesn't know that there's a difference. If it, that, that is the root of all evil when it comes to, to dog training. That's what I speak against. That's what we say when we say you're humanizing the relationship between you and your dog. If you can't just interact with your dog the same way that they would want to interact with each other, as in you use the same communication methods. So, you know, when cash, when, when velocity does what cashmere says, it's not out of love. It's, it's out of respect for cashmere's authority because cashmere will enforce her authority. If the dog doesn't listen, it is out of fear. Okay. Do children listen out of love of their parents out of love of their father? No, they listen out of fear. If you have a problem with an animal listening to you out of fear, do not get a Cani Corso or really any other large, uh, potentially aggressive breed of dog. Genuinely, do not do it because you're not going to be cut out for it. All right. Uh, this is the, these dogs are going to be way too much for you. Okay. You cannot apply your own rules. You don't get to do that. And, and especially rules that don't apply to any other social creature. Um, Social hierarchy, dominance hierarchy exists in all social mammals. There are many studies that show, um, and, and I'm sure that some people already know this. If you follow Jordan Peterson, uh, I do. I'm an avid watcher. Sorry if that upsets anyone, but I love Jordan Peterson. Um, he has a very scientific view of things, and that's logical, scientific. That's the way I, um, that's the way that I think about things. And, um, and he looks at it at face value, and that's what I do with the dogs. Dogs are a part of a social hierarchy. Their nervous system is based on serotonin. Um, when an animal is higher up in a um, dominant hierarchy, they have higher serotonin levels. Um, higher serotonin levels are, they generate happiness. I mean, that's what we usually call the happiness um, uh, hormone. So, you know, you're going to be feeling a lot better about yourself when you're higher up in the hierarchy. And that's because we evolved from lobsters and, you know, we, there's just been a chain of evolution and, um, and we evolved to have that same nervous system. It is older than the trees. So don't ever come at me with a, with a theory or, or even coming to me trying to say that the dominance theory is a theory. No, the dominance, uh, being a theory is the theory. Okay. And it's crap. It's probably, it's just crap. It's, it's the fact that people have been out of nature for so long that they've absolutely lost touch with what it means to be, to be wild or to, or to exist in a, in a, in a social hierarchy that isn't governed by, uh, police and, 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 and as if, as if any of that isn't the hierarchy itself. I mean, if you can't see the hierarchy around you, I can't help you. And that's what I told that guy, you know, when he, he was so in denial and I was just like, you know what? I cannot help you. I cannot help you. You don't want to be helped. You know, like you just want, 
you just want to do what you want to do. And, and that's not the right thing. You're not doing what's right for the dogs. You're doing what's right for you and your feelings. And, and that's selfish. That is ultimately the most selfish thing you can do. Okay. If my daughter requires discipline, if she's done something wrong and she needs to be disciplined for it, but I don't want to discipline her because it hurts my feelings to have to, to have to discipline my child, to have to hurt my child's feelings, then I'm being selfish. I am denying her something that she genuinely needs in her life only to, to ease my own feelings so that I don't have to experience something that I feel is negative because what parent wants to intentionally cause their child to feel bad or have their feelings hurt or whatever, right? Like no, no parent wants to discipline their child. We don't look forward to that. It's something we do because it's necessary. And if you can't discipline your dog or your child, well, don't have a child. First of all, if you do, if you're not keen on disciplining, just don't do it. All that stuff they talk about with the, you can just do positive reinforcement. It doesn't work. I promise you. It might work if you've got some like kid that just is very agreeable. But if you've got a kid like mine, if you're, if the blood like mine runs through your child, then buddy, you better watch out because we take advantage. Yeah. We take advantage of people like that. Okay. We'll take that kindness and turn it around and shove it right back up your butt. Let me tell you something. When we're kids, we do not play. Like that's how me and my, that's how I was as a kid. I, I, you know, did not uh, do well with that. I only did well with people that were tough and no nonsense and didn't put up with my crap. And, um, and I'm just like my dogs. My dogs are the same way. They will push, push, push. And if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Um, you know, they are tough, tough dogs, but if you do your job and you raise them right, they're amazing, awesome. Yes, that's what you get. Amazing, awesome, loyal, loving dogs, but you have to do your part. Okay. You have to discipline them. You have to play by the rules of the game, of the social hierarchy of the pack. And if you're not going to do that, then go buy a cat. Okay. Cats, cats don't do that. Cats don't do the whole social hierarchy thing unless they're lions and you don't have one. So go get a cat. If you don't want to discipline something, disciplining cats doesn't work. So, you know, yeah, they just hate you. <laughs> like don't discipline a cat. I'm seriously, don't spray them. Just, we do the, the sound. We, we have a sound. And the creature immediately knows Let's see if he'll do it. Let's see if he'll do it. So if my cat comes downstairs when she's not supposed to be down here, because she's a Savannah cat, She's a, a pretty expensive cat, so I don't like for her to be down here because she could get let out or whatever, so she stays in my room. But watch this when she comes down. So watch. Preach is over there. Watch. <laughs> there you go. That was so <laughs> he just went to go check on her and make sure Preacher! that she, that she was still in the room from a dead sleep. Good boy, Breacher. Did you check on the cat? Did you check on her? Did you check on her? <laughs> All right, that's enough. Come here. Preacher, come on. Get down here. Preacher, hey. You heard what I said. Anyway, so if, if you're, if, you know, anyway, so if you're not willing to do your part, just don't get one, get a cat. Like I said, we've got a cat. You can get a cat. Um, there's nothing wrong with cats. Cats are awesome. Um, cats are the cats are the animals for people that are not dog people. If you're a dog person, then you're a pack person. I don't, you know, that used to be the thing that defined them. At least I thought it was. So, um, just don't, just don't do it, man. Don't do it. Don't put a dog uh, through it because you don't want to do it because it's got nothing to do with the dog. Your, your inability or, or unwillingness to discipline the animal has nothing to do with the dog. They do not personalize it. They're not humanizing it. Psh, preacher, hush it up. When I talk about, um, not humanizing the dogs, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about treating them differently than they would treat each other differently than a dog. What preacher? What? What? Preacher. What? Hey. What? What velocity? Yeah, they're all riled up. So anyway, so I just, I had to do that little rant. Um, 
Seriously, if you're if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to discipline, that only wants to do positive reinforcement, you think that a hug and a kiss will fix everything, please do not follow my channel. I've got nothing for you. I cannot help you. Um, we don't exist in the same reality. As far as I'm concerned, trying to argue whether or not um, dogs exist in a hierarchy or whether or not dominance exists, you might as well argue that gravity doesn't exist. That's that's literally how I feel about it. So it's not even a discussion I'm willing to have. I don't. I'm not going to debate uh, reality with you like that. You can live in your own reality by all means. Do what you want to do. Just don't ask me to participate in it. Are there people who so. I'm sure that there are, honey. There are people that believe the, the earth is flat. So, um, you know, and that's its own little thing. But nonetheless, uh, I'm just not doing it. I'm not going there. Um, I'm not having that discussion. I live with a pack of dogs. I've, I've done it my whole life. I know more about dogs than I do about people. And, and I even know that people exist in a hierarchy. And I know that because I've grown up around groups of people my entire life. Um, little known fact about me. Um, I grew up in foster care from the age of seven years old. I've been in packs of kids a lot of my life. And let me tell you something. If you think that humans don't exist in packs, you need to go and study uh, places where, where, where people are unwillingly put together um, like that. You know, especially raw people that really haven't been socialized very well. I mean, you know, it, you can't tell me that. It, it's just, you're not going to get anywhere with that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to have that conversation. So I know how it works. I know that dominance is real. I've seen it for myself. I've been the victim of, of being, at, I've been in Omega. Um, you know, when I was in foster care, I got picked on a lot. There's a reason that I stay away from people and I stick with dogs. Because um, I learned very young and early on that people can be quite vicious especially in groups. And um, I've watched people that were good people be, do horrible, mean things and not do anything to stand up just because of the hierarchy, because stepping out of the hierarchy was something that was bad. So, you know, I'm not going to listen to it, right? I'm not going to have that conversation. Uh, just because you haven't experienced it doesn't mean that it's not real. So, and just because you can't see it, for whatever reason, these people can't see it. I told this guy, he was sitting there talking about how he was a big fan of Cesar Milan, but then he read some books. And I said, how is it that you can't look at my dogs? Or that, yep, see, she's like, she's like, quit freaking out. Cashmere, get out of it. Now, shh, lay down. Um, I said, how is it that you can't look at my dogs, that you can't look at what Cesar Milan does and see for yourself what is going on? And yet he reads a book and it changes his mind. At what point? And he, then he said, then he said, oh, I believe in science. Excuse me. Observing natural animal behavior is science. Reading people's opinions in books is not science. What is wrong with the world today that, that these kinds of conversations have to be had? I don't understand it. I'm sorry. I'm, it put me in a bit of a, in a mood. And normally I try not to be. I try to be more diplomatic, but today's not the day. So, um, there you go. Um, <laughs> sorry, we had to start. You know what? It's a Monday, so might as well, right? Coffee and rant. Yeah, coffee. Yeah, here's my huge cup of coffee today. Coffee and rant. Um, been a while since we had one, but you know what? What better topic than, um, than going after the whole positive reinforcement group? I mean, good Lord. So anyway, we'll, um, we'll talk at you later. Hopefully we'll have something a little bit more upbeat later on for you. Okay. You have a great day. I hope that your Monday is better than mine's been so far. Um, all right. Talk at you later. Bye. <laughs>